Well, my message this morning is uh, around uh, the Acts tr uh, reading that we did this morning um, about Pentecost and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of your spirit be with us all this morning as we praise you together. Amen. All right, well, uh, last Sunday was Pentecost, um, and we didn't quite touch that, uh, so I chose to, to center my, my message around that this morning, um, since, and hence the, the red. Um, Western Christians, uh, red on Pentecost symbolizes the the tongues of fire that came upon the disciples. Um, Eastern and European um, Christians, uh, they, they use green. So you're right there with that. And the green symbolizes the harvest. Uh, Pentecost, uh, in the time of our readings of Acts uh, chapter 2, was a Jewish festival held in Jer Jerusalem about, not about, exactly 50 days after Passover. In Christianity, we mark pa Pentecost as occurring 50 days after Christ's resurrection, 50 days after Easter. Jews celebrated Pe Pentecost as a festival of the harvest, and it drew people from all over, as we heard in the scripture, um, from uh, just about every area of the land around Jerusalem. Jerusalem then was quite multicultural. We could loosely compare it to uh, New York City and the fact that there were so many from so many different cultures and all with their own languages and uh, traditions. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the scripture it says that the disciples were gathered, and it's unclear what venue exactly it was. It could have been a house, it could have been a room at the temple, it could have been a big tent, and it had to have space of some relative size because um, it wasn't just the 12. Uh, by that time, uh, Judas had been uh, replaced um, but there were also 120 witnesses there. Um, they were probably praying. They may have been discussing how to spread this newly created church led by Jesus Christ. All of a sudden, there was a sound of a great rush and a roar of wind that passed over the gathered, and it was loud. Perhaps it sounded like a freight train. I can, I can picture someone running around in panic saying, it's a twister, it's a twister. The Holy Spirit is often described as arriving in a rush of wind. And when it subsided, the tongues of fire rested on each of them. Now, the tongues refer to the ability to communicate the good news in different languages, or tongues. The fire is a symbol of God's purifying presence. And our scripture says that all were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, as I read earlier, all of the commotion drew a big crowd, and they were trying to find out what was going on. Uh, they, heard the dis they heard the disciples speaking and prophesying in each of their native tongues. And some were awestruck, and some were confused, and some were mocking. Peter would uh, address that mockery later on in the scripture in Acts. But the event in, described in Acts chapter 2 the first appearance of 
The, the event d- described in Acts chapter 2 wasn't the first appearance of the Holy Spirit. We see the Spirit throughout the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, it came to be known as the Holy Spirit. But it has been present since the day of creation. So what, or better, who is the Holy Spirit? I was talking about uh, with one of my fellow uh, ministerial students about this, and she mentioned to me that um, she doesn't think her congregation quite understands the Holy Spirit. And maybe we do, and maybe we don't. But the Holy Spirit is here. And you may say, yes, I want this Holy Spirit. How do I get it? Well, it isn't like you can order it on Amazon, Uh, at least not yet. They might figure out a way. (laughs) The Holy Spirit is one of the three persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's easy to see see as persons, the Father and the Son, It might be a little hard for many to get their heads around the Holy Spirit as being a person. While I was writing this message, I had a conversation with my sister and and she, I was talking about this and she still has a problem conceiving as the Holy Spirit as a person. And I would be admonished by one of my instructors by using a male pronoun of him Uh, in referring to the Holy Spirit, but uh, indulge me here. Uh, The Holy Spirit is described as a person and not an it. And I'm not exactly comfortable referring to the Holy Spirit as him, but since the Spirit is a person, it's just easier than getting to twist it up into semantics. Now we see throughout the Bible, he has intentions, shows willfulness and discretion, loves, communicates, testifies, teaches, and prays. These are qualities that distinguish him as a person. The Holy Spirit was present during each stage of Christ's life. When the angel appeared to Mary, the mother of Jesus, he declared, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. That was from Luke chapter one. Later on at the baptism of Jesus, which marked the beginning of his public ministry, the Holy Spirit was present on this occasion as well, and could be seen in material form. When Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water and suddenly the heavens opened up for him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him. Uh, That's Matthew chapter three. And during his ministry, Jesus taught about the Holy Spirit and he had a relationship with him. Furthermore, he urged his disciples to receive him in their lives. So we find the Holy Spirit. Well, we can listen for him, maybe in the words of others around us, maybe in the words of a pastor, He might not shake us in a violent wind as with the disciples in today's lesson. He may speak to us in a still small voice, but we need to listen. We can look for him even in going out about about our daily lives. He may show himself in perhaps an unexpected way or perhaps in a subtle or even mundane way. We need to be vigilant and watch. 
We can, of course, pray. We can speak to him in our prayers and know that we are heard. The Holy Spirit may simply present himself unexpectedly, even if we are not looking, listening, or praying. He may just show up. Leave your heart open for when he does. In closing, I'll ask for blessings to fall upon all of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of course, the Holy Spirit. Amen.